Welcome back to Old School Sports and our Out of the Park Baseball 23 playthrough of the Colorado Rockies. We are closing in on the winter meetings. Uh, it's the end of our second, beginning of our third season as general manager of the Colorado Rockies. Got new ownership following the end of the regular season and our ownership is a win at all costs owner but he's also very generous financially so he has um upped our budget by 60 million dollars this year to 260 million which shockingly only makes us a middle market team um i in ootp 23 this year on uh, the three videos we've done on this channel or the three video series we've done on this channel Started out with the Kansas City Royals, played 16 years there, moved to the Pirates, played 11 years with them, and as I mentioned, I'm now starting the third season with the Rockies, and uh, we've never had a payroll anywhere near this amount. So even though it's still just a middle market type budget, uh, I am like a kid in the candy store so far this off season. You can see we've still got $13 million to spend but we've made some really big moves to hopefully improve our team, hopefully improve off the 96 wins we had last year in our second season as general manager of the Rockies and uh, give our ownership the winner that uh, so far he's very willing to pay for. So the big moves this offseason in the free agent market, we picked up Javi Toledo uh, from the Mets, signed him to a five-year deal, uh, averages... 19 million uh a little over i think right around 19 a little over 19 million a year if i could do some simple math 19.2 million a year a little front loaded this year and then a team option in the fifth year of the contract but uh toledo is a pitcher with pretty good movement and an extreme ground ball pitcher so we think those will play well in cores good personality great stamina great at holding runners and he's an iron man as far as his injury proneness uh, gives us a third lefty in the starting rotation and over the course of his career he's definitely been a uh, well above average major league pitcher so really excited to have um, mr toledo on board particularly because uh if we think way way back to his history he was a guy when we were still general manager of the Kansas City Royals that we signed as an international amateur free agent back in 2035. So uh, you can see he started his career with the Royals, went to the Mets a couple years ago, and uh, now 15 years after I uh, signed him as the GM of the Royals, he's uh, joining the team that I'm running here in Colorado. So nice to have Toledo on board. We also made a trade uh, for Omar Jones, one of the top closers in the game. The issue is uh, he's still in his arbitration years, actually. He was due to make, uh, as you can see, over $20 million this year. His arbitration number was closer to 21. We got him for a little less than that. So Atlanta didn't want to be spending uh, over $20 million on a closer, which I totally understand. But we had a lot of money to spend and I didn't think we were going to be going crazy with the potential free agents that were out there outside of Toledo, who we've already talked about. So we didn't have to trade very much to get Omar Jones. It was just a, a willingness to be able to pay him over $20 million this year. So another ground ball pitcher with great movement um, over the course of his career. He's put up even more spectacular numbers than Toledo with a 148 ERA plus and an 81 fit minus, obviously over a much smaller sample size, being a relief pitcher and being four years younger. But think that he is going to be a real asset coming out of the bullpen for us. Uh, we were hoping to maybe sign him to an extension, um, but you can see he's looking for about $25 million a year in a four-year deal. Um, even with the fact that I am in the best financial situation I've ever been in in OOTP 23 with the big increase in our budget, uh, $25 million for a closer who may be only pitching, you know, 70, 80, 90 innings uh, seems, seems aggressive to me. So it may be one year and done with Mr. Jones, but if we move on from him, uh, that'll be money that we can put into somebody else uh, next year. 
And then moving on to how we've spent the money on position players, um, we've brought in a couple of high-priced guys through trade. We actually haven't gone crazy in free agency with position players. You can see uh, Elijah Moore here, good young first baseman, 26 years old, uh, picked him up in his $12 million contract from the Mariners. Uh, he's gotten off to a really nice start in his career, never hit fewer than 32 homers in a season. And he's durable as far as his injury proneness. So our expectation would certainly be if he's in the lineup every day next year playing in cores that we're going to get even crazier home run numbers out of him with that great contact and great home run power that he has. Also has a captain personality, which uh, we needed on the team. Had to give up some um, assets to bring him on board. Had to give up Nick Moore, who's the uh, number 85 prospect in baseball, 23-year-old outfielder who is bouncing back from an MCL that um, ended his uh, season last year in AA early. And then we also had to give up Israel Cota, who we picked at number 11 overall in the draft in 2049. Shortstop prospect, a really good defender. His bat is not developing the way that we had hoped. Uh, it was not cheap to bring up Elijah Moore uh, in terms of the assets we had to get up and then also in terms of taking on $12 million plus in contract for this year. And his arbitration number expected to be closer to 14 next year. But think that he will give us um, a really good potential first baseman slash DH slash potential left fielder in a pinch. And another big bat for our offense. And then most recently, and out of nowhere, uh, we traded for Robbie Carrillo from the St. Louis Cardinals. Uh, excellent defensive outfielder. Um, he's been a center fielder by trade through his career. We've got the excellent Padilla in center field for us right now, so he actually may end up just being a uh, great range left fielder for us. But love the fact that he's also durable with a plus bat. He's making a lot of money this year, and he's signed to a contract where he's going to be making $34 million in the third and fourth seasons that he's with us before he can potentially opt out. We did get the Cardinals to retain 25% of the contract with the offer that we made to them, but he is still going to be a very expensive player for us going forward, but felt like investing the money in a guy who was still only 26 years old and was signed through some of his free agent years, probably made more sense than trying to pick up a guy in his early 30s off of the free agent market. Uh, once again, it was not a painless trade for us to make. Um, had to give up the top, or the, I don't know if he's the top, but the closest to the majors uh, frontline starting pitching prospect in our system, Mel Armstead. Um, you can see he's got very good movement plus control and ultimately will have plus stuff with a four pitch arsenal. Um, the movement I think would play well in Colorado. If he had been a ground ball tendency type pitcher, it would have been harder for me to move on from him. But given the additions we've made to our staff over the last couple of seasons felt like we could roll the dice and potentially move on from Mel Armstead, one of the top prospects in our system. And then we also had to give up Andrew Booker, who is a really good young outfielder. Um, been in the majors for two full years and parts of another. Put up a 133 OPS plus, a 134 WRC plus. Um, but unlike Carrillo, um, and if I could... Go back to Booker. Um, Booker is fragile physically, doesn't have the best personality in the world as far as the influence on his teammates, and he's also not as good defensively as Carrillo is. So um, although he's not making much money this year, the number is going to start going up when he's arbitration eligible next season. And uh, felt like bringing on the better defensive player who's much more durable and we think will ultimately be pretty similar offensively, uh, was a good move for us. So um, that was another move that soaked up a fair amount of the money that had opened up in our budget. So at this point, our big moves for the offseason are certainly done. Still have a couple of minor league uh, free agent offers out, but you can see neither of them want to do a minor league deal. So that's probably not going to happen. 
And then we've got offers out to Ethan Fox and Jordan Casares, a couple of free agents, one-year deals. Um, could be guys who could make the back end of our roster. Uh, Fox, like his captain personality and a lot of position versatility. And then Casares is just a dynamic defensive player with some speed, good bunter, not much of a hitter, uh, but certainly someone as a utility infielder think has potentially a lot of value. So would love to bring him on board with the fact that we did end up bringing the um, captain type personality we were looking for on board with the trade that we made for more if uh, ethan fox decides to go in a different direction it will not uh not break our hearts and with the winter meetings coming up uh in just a couple of days would think that we may be getting some feedback from fox and casares uh in relatively short order And as expected, we did hear from both Fox and Casares here on the opening day of the winter meetings. Uh, they're both leaning towards our contracts. Don't know whether they'll get anything else over the next few days. Uh, lottery results, not an issue for us this year. Uh, last year, we moved up from 12 to 3, which was a huge victory for us. Looks like um, you know the top six remain the top six this year, although uh, the Cubs certainly not going to be feeling good about uh, dropping back from number one to number five. And we're going to think a little bit about whether we should change our ticket prices again. We've been slowly moving them upwards. You can see uh, last year our average was $25.61. We've got the price at $29 right now. Fan interest is off the charts with some of the big players that we've brought on board. And we're also obviously coming off of a 96-win season. And my expectation is we should be well into the 90s with wins next year uh, we were second in the league in attendance last year so um ownership does have a goal um that we get up to forty-eight thousand a game by 2054 um obviously my goal is to generate as much revenue as possible um but would like to meet that ownership goal. I tend to think given their focus is really just on winning rather than profitability that um, I'm hoping that means that our budget is going to, you know, continue to increase even if um, even if we're not making tons of money um, simply because we're winning on the field and we get a ownership addicted to the dopamine of uh, winning division titles and hopefully ultimately winning a World Series title. So it'll be interesting to see how that evolves, but I think at this point we're going to stick with a $29 ticket price, see what kind of season ticket revenue that ends up generating, and then uh, if demand is still off the charts um, when we get into next season and fan interest remains at crazy high levels, we can always up uh, the ticket price a little bit on the non-season ticket holders next year. And Luis Flores, who was on our team for really just a couple of months, um, apparently the fans are really upset to see him leave. We never uh, never even made an offer to him. Bringing him back was uh, just not something we were going to do. Um, still have fan interest over 100, so we um, took the hit from him moving on. I do think that, uh, and I've talked about this in previous episodes, that um, you know the fan interest is a pretty blunt tool um luis flores literally played 23 games for us now he did do really well hitting 363 and 91 at bats um but he's a 31 year old who's wrecked physically and pretty limited defensively for uh fan interest to almost crash and fans be shocked that we didn't uh re-up a player who had been, I believe, looking for around $10 million a year. Yeah, he got almost $12 million with the Padres. Uh, for that to have a significant negative interest on fan interest is uh, a little bit realistic from my perspective and uh, something that I hope they will um, make a little more nuanced in the game going forward. And take another hit to fan interest with um, the departure of our closer from last year, Jose Calderon. Um, very good pitcher, lefty. Uh, he ended up getting $11.4 million from the Angels. Um, had a solid year for us, although um, was not at his best in our 
two nothing wild card series loss to the Giants. He's a popular player, so we took another hit to fan interest. I mean, he was at least with us for a full year, 39 saves, a prominent role for us. Um, and you can see that fan interest is still so far, so far above 100 that um, even the loss of these players isn't uh, having a substantive impact on that number yet. It probably will at some point in the not-so-distant future, but... Um, Given that we brought on Mr. Omar Jones to be our closer, uh, we never really made any effort to bring back Calderon. And as the month of December continues past the winter meetings now, we did sign both Ethan Fox and Jordan Casares. Um, so, as I mentioned, uh, with the fact that we also had ended up making that trade for more um, Ethan Fox's leadership is not as pivotal as it might have been. Um, I think that Casares right now with his outstanding defense is definitely more likely to make the 26-man roster than Fox is. But things can certainly change and there can certainly be injuries as we get into spring training. So um, feel good to have both of them on board and we still have uh, plenty of money to potentially spend um, don't think we're going to go crazy in free agency at this point by any stretch of the imagination. But um, if there's some bargains as we get closer to spring training uh, or maybe even in spring training, we're certainly always going to be looking to, to add talent. And you can see our initial view on the uh, higher ticket prices is, is that the uh, fan interest is kind of uh, overwhelming the 13% increase in ticket prices as we're... Um, projected to sell almost 14% more season tickets this year and have attendance up about 8% overall. So uh, could be generating a lot more revenue this upcoming season, particularly if the team is as good on the field as we hope it will be. And we've made it now to the Rule 5 draft. Uh, Going to be Interesting to see what happens with the Rule 5 this year. Uh, we have used it each of our first two years, um, running the Rockies, to bring on players who um not necessarily great, but certainly in the mix for roster spots. Uh, last season at this time, we picked up Manlio Milinhos, and all he did was hit 343 and 213 at-bats for us. Um, Likely going to be a utility outfielder for us again with the depth that we've had in our outfield and the big time players that we've also added this season in Moore and Carrillo. But I um, think that this guy's a pretty nice bat and a pretty useful utility outfielder. Like the fact that he's a left handed bat, we're a little light on those. Like his good personality. Not great defensively, but um, you know, for a fourth or fifth outfielder, he's been pretty useful to us. And then the other uh, player that we picked up a year earlier in our first Rule 5 draft back in 2048 is Jose Brito. Kept him up, obviously, to retain control of him in 2049. Ended up spending most of last year in AAA, but was effective there, hitting 289 and hit 312 and 48 at bats at the major league level. Another guy with a good personality, um, pretty versatile defensively, and uh, hits enough that um, you know if you have to use him as one of the back end guys on your roster, you don't feel too bad about doing it. So um, we've ended up uh, retaining one guy from each of the first two Rule Five drafts that we did, and and we'll see what happens uh, with the new Rule Five draft this year. Not going to be picking until near the end, twenty seventh. So we'll auto draft until our pick. And we'll wait and scout things out a bit before um, checking to see what our scouting director recommends we do. And there actually are a few interesting players to potentially take a flyer on. A 29-year-old closer, Ricky Browd. Not a bad option for a team like ours. He's a right-hander, um, plus movement, ground baller. Pitcher type, ground ball tendencies, great personality with the captain personality class, and he's durable. His fastball is great. He's really a one-pitch pitcher because his circle change isn't all that good. Um, at the major league level, he's still been an above-average pitcher, though. I don't know that he would make our team 
but to have a guy like that in camp, not the worst thing in the world. Jordan Medrano is a similar story. Um, another ground baller with ground ball tendencies, pretty good personality, plus movement. Um, he's a guy who could start if if you needed him to. He's wrecked physically, um, a little older, going to be 31 in about a month. But he is, um, you know, another competent major league pitcher who has been uh, close to league average, depending on how you look at the metrics over the course of his career. Um, so those two guys are interesting, these guys who could help right now. And then there are also a couple of very high potential uh, batters. Adam Fields is intriguing to me, um, given that we're in Colorado. He's durable. He's a left-handed bat. And he looks like he could be a well above average contact hitter with pretty good home run power if he completely develops. He hasn't played above high A ball. Um, and he is a mess defensively. You know, you could play him at left field or first base. That's really about it. I guess you could play him in right field also, but you're not going to feel real great about playing him anywhere defensively. But it's definitely an interesting bat that could play decently in Colorado. In Bob Quesada, second baseman, um, not a bad bat for a second baseman who's not even 23 years old. Another guy who's just so far from, from being major league ready, though, hit 264 in A ball last year. Um, listed as a second baseman, not ideally a second baseman and don't really want to play him uh, anywhere in the outfield. He is 6'2", so could make him a first baseman. Just don't know if he's really got enough uh, enough of a bat to be somebody that you want to play at first or DH. Um, is going to draw a fair amount of walks, though. So both of those guys have a little bit of potential. So I have a feeling it's going to be hard for us, given that we're looking to contend next year and given the number of quality players we've already added to our roster. I think it's going to be real hard for us to end up keeping either of these guys if we picked them. And even the pitchers, I think um, both Broad or... Oh, we haven't looked at Mandahano yet. I changed the uh, search. Broad or Madrano, um, you know, would have a tough time making the team. Willie Mandahano, when we're searching on potential... Um, Actually kind of interesting with that great movement. Another guy who's um, played in rookie ball last year did make it up to A ball the year before. Um, interesting prospect. I just don't think that a guy like that we could uh, have on the major league roster. But we'll see what the scouting director recommends. He doesn't recommend that we do anything. Um, I'm going to disagree with him a little bit. I don't think Ricky Browd is going to make the team for us, but I'm willing to bring him into camp and see if we've got anything with him. So we are going to go ahead and take Ricky Browd here in the first round, draft him, move on to the second round. We did lose Nelson Soto. Um, no harm, no foul there. 35-year-old um, who we had uh, signed as a... Uh, Signed to a minor league contract before last season. We're not going to protect him on the 40-man roster, so no shock. Oh, I guess maybe it is a little bit of shock that we lost him, but no, uh, no disappointment on our end. Um, here in the second round, uh, you can see Mandujano and Medrano both available. Uh, as far as the batters with potential, both Fields and Quesada are around. We're going to take a flyer on the first baseman, Fields. Um, I don't think he's going to end up being able to make our 26-man roster, but a guy who potentially has 70 contact and 65 home run power um, hitting in Colorado, if that's the 26th man on your roster, there are definitely worse situations that you could be in. So we'll bring... a. Fields on board also, and that will do it for us in the Rule 5 this year. I don't know that we're going to end up keeping either of those guys. It was actually a pretty active Rule 5 draft. Um, 
see about a dozen players picked in the first round, another six in the second round, and Cincinnati and Detroit even picking in the third and fourth round. So not sure if um, Adam Fields is going to make the team. I think he probably won't. Ricky Browd probably has a somewhat better chance of making it, but uh, got a couple more bodies that are going to be in camp with us when we get to spring training, and uh, maybe we'll catch lightning in a bottle with one of them as we um, kind of feel like we have in previous years with uh, Brito in the 2049 Rule 5 and then Milhinhos in the 2049 um, Rule 5 last year. And we've now simmed ahead to the new year, 2051, uh, doing some scouting of our minor leaguers just to make sure that we know as much about our organization as possible. Also got the Hall of Fame voting results today. Uh, only one player elected, uh, Danny DeAndrade, 84% of the vote in his first year. And uh, our former superstar with the Kansas City Royals, Bobby Witt Jr., uh, fails to make the team in his 10th and final time on the ballot. And uh, he has now been dropped from the ballot. So Bobby Witt Jr., um, despite a very successful career, um, never got above 67.7% on the ballot and had dipped back down below 50% this year, which was um, the second lowest figure that he ever he ever earned in his career. So um, despite a 80.6 war over the course of his career, uh, five World Series titles, four playoff MVP awards, um, nine gold gloves, uh, nine-time All-Star, I believe, and also a Rookie of the Year award. Uh, Bobby Witt Jr. will not be joining the Immortals of the Game in Cooperstown. And another day, another player moving on, uh, left-handed pitcher Jordan Stallworth, uh, who had been a reliever for us the past couple of seasons, uh, has moved on to Atlanta. And finally starting to have an impact on fan interest. Uh, dipped just below 100 to 98 right now, so still a lot of excitement about the Rockies as we um, head closer to the 2051 season, but um, we finally have... Um, Disappointed at least a few of the pan the fans with some of those recent departures that we've had after uh, getting them all excited with the free agent acquisitions and the trades that we made. And the preseason's about to begin tomorrow, so we're just going to check in briefly on um, what's on the free agent market. Um, still a fair amount of decent batters available. Um, prices for most of them are pretty high, with the exception of 38-year-old Ramon Herrera or the injured uh, Seung Hyun Myung. So I don't really see that there's anything that we need to um, chase after there. We'll also check in on the uh, pitchers who are available at this point. Still some interesting names out there. Greg Gaylord is a guy who we know from our days in Pittsburgh. Um, Pretty effective reliever over the course of his career, but don't think that that um, low movement will play particularly well in Colorado. So um, for those of you who know how um, loyal I am to some of my former players, um, probably a little surprised that I'm not going to bring Greg Gaylor to Colorado, but don't know that that would uh, necessarily be the best fit in the world. Uh, Cortez Arroyo is still on the market. This is a guy who um, could start, could relieve. I think he's better as a reliever. He's wanted a spot in the starting rotation, so we haven't um, really pushed things with him. But he does have great movement on his pitchers, extreme ground ball tendencies, ground ball or pitcher type. Um, I think he could be a pretty interesting right-handed arm out of the bullpen. Um, don't love the negative aspects of his personality, but not a lot of money for an arm that could be um, pretty interesting. Also going to take a look and see if there's any lefties out there that have really good movement on their pitches. Um, 
David Curry actually does, um, but he's 38 years old, and his stuff and his control are not that great. Um, he's wrecked physically, so that is not a guy that we're going to chase after, even though we could probably use another left-handed arm in the bullpen. Uh, Jordan Montgomery, just not enough movement on his pitches. Jorge Sanchez, maybe. Anthony Williams, another guy who we could certainly think about on the margins. Um, I just don't know that any of these guys are actually going to make our team. So um, from that perspective, it feels a little disingenuous to chase after him like crazy. Jorge Sanchez, if he was looking for less than $16 million, would actually be interesting. Um, we can see if that demand ends up coming down as we get closer to um, closer to the beginning of, of the season. But if Sanchez is still on the market in a month and a half and um, his demand is a lot less and he's also willing to potentially at least start working out of the bullpen rather than being guaranteed or promised a spot in the starting rotation, he's somebody to think about down the line. Uh, but I don't think right now there's... a anyone that we really need to chase after. Jose Navarez is a guy that we've looked at in the past. Um, extreme ground ball tendencies, good movement on his pitches, an iron man, uh, but he's going to be 37 years old soon and at this point is kind of a generic right-handed reliever and we've got a lot of guys that look like him in our pen already, so um, don't feel like we have to chase after anybody at this point. Huh, and this is kind of interesting. As uh, generous as Jose Williams is with his money, he's actually cut our budget from 260 to 250 at this point. So we're uh, 50 million higher than we were a year ago. Um, but I guess uh, he's generous in terms of giving you a lot of money to play with in the off season. But if you don't spend it, um, he'll he'll kind of pull back on it a little bit. So that's interesting to know. Glad that we had already upped our scouting and development budgets, and we should have plenty set aside in the draft budget to give us a little bit of insurance money to play with down the line, but uh, that certainly will limit what um, we can potentially do in, in the remainder of free agency. As we just looked through, there wasn't really anyone that we were desperately in need of on the market, but certainly the fact that he has clawed back $10 million from us at this point will... Uh, mean that our big activity is almost certainly done at this point. And as we close in on uh, spring training beginning in a few days later this week, uh, we have made a number of uh, minor league free agent signings, most notably Jordan Medrano, a guy that we were talking about. think that he's got a profile to be a acceptably successful pitcher at the major league level in Colorado, only 31 years old. Um, he is a guy who we had on our roster um, back in 2048 and 2049 uh, before we did move on from him. Um, didn't want to guarantee him major league money, but as a guy uh, to have in AAA with uh, ground ball tendencies, could be an insurance policy for us if we have a lot of injuries. We'll certainly bring him into spring training. Uh, I think it's extremely unlikely that he will make the 26-man roster, but uh, we can stash him in AAA. And uh, if we have a bunch of issues and we need a spot starter or we need an arm out of the bullpen, maybe Medrano can be that guy for us. And we made it to the start of spring training, got 41 players in camp, uh, 18 pitchers, and we've got 23 position players, a lot of outfielders. We're trying to play with the lineups a little bit to give everyone as much uh, opportunity to play on a somewhat regular basis as possible. Um, but the main goal is for the team to stay healthy uh, through this next uh, three or four weeks, uh, get a little bit of a... Uh, Get a little bit of action, shake off the rust from the winter, and hopefully have a roster that is healthy and ready to go when we get to the end of March and uh, break camp to head north to Colorado. And we've made it to the end of spring training, although the last four games were not all that great with three losses and a tie. Uh, was overall a 
relatively successful spring for the Rockies. Uh, 16, 10, and 2 was our record. Uh, so the Giants, who took us out in the playoffs last year, had a better spring than us this season. Uh, most importantly, although we have had a few guys banged up here and there throughout the spring, right now everyone on the spring training 41 man roster is healthy at this point so that is the most important news uh, now we've got to get to the business of making some final cuts uh, getting these 18 pitchers down to 12 or 13 and getting the 23 uh, everyday players down to 13 or 14 depending on how we want the 26 man roster to look when all is said and done And we've almost made our final cuts, and we will finalize them uh, at the start of our next episode, down to 14 pitchers and 14 position players. So we've either got to cut two pitchers or one pitcher and one position player to kind of get to the 26-man roster we intend to have. Do you feel like uh, we could potentially go to only 12 pitchers because with the exception of Ricky Browd, uh, all of the pitchers competing for a roster spot at this point have uh, incredible stamina ricky browd is our uh one of our rule five picks from last year um like him um but he's really a one-trick pony with that fastball and given that we might be going to 12 pitchers there's just no way that he's going to make it. So we're going to release him back to the Angels, which will free up a little money for us. Um, I don't know if I agree with that. We'll obviously be finalizing the um, roster and the staff and the lineups, but down to 13 pitchers. Possible that we still have got one more cut to make, but the rotation is going to be Dave Alvarado, Javi Toledo, Jesus Galindo, Juan Vargas, and Chase Crawford to start. Omar Jones, our new closer. Tyrone Colbert and Vinny Gutierrez as potential setup men. Danny Rodas and Ethan Mingo in the middle relief roles. Will Lucio and lefty Victor Fields as long relievers. And lefty Latrell Young as our potential lefty specialist. So if we go with 13 pitchers, that is the way things are going to look have to find one more guy to either cut to trade away or send down to triple a if uh, we want to get to 12 pitchers the lineups have um proven to be an interesting choice we got gonzalez and demetrius williams back as our catchers jamal cohen elijah moore is first baseman slash dh moore can also play the outfield he's one of our big prize additions from the offseason Juan Castillo at second, Alex Ortega at third. Been a battle for short between newcomer Jordan Casares and shortstop from last year, Rogelio Terrazas. And then in the outfield, we've got um, Bobby Perez, Tony Padilla, and Robbie Carrillo are likely going to be our starters in right, center, and left. Also have Danny Ruiz, who could be in competition to be starting second baseman with Castillo. Yoshitaro Nakahara, um, who should be back in a uh, part-time role for us. Um, the one guy I haven't mentioned is our Rule 5 acquisition, Adam Fields, um, and he's given us a little bit of a headache. Um, we've got an updated scouting report on him. We think he's a four-and-a-half star potential player. Um, no speed, can't play defense anywhere, but the bat is potentially very interesting. He's never been above high A ball, um, but he did hit 317 in high A ball last year after hitting 13 home runs in uh, A ball before he got promoted. He did hit only 251 in A ball. Our scout, you know, thinks that he's basically ready for the majors. Um, I don't know how much playing time he's going to get, and I don't know um, whether we want to keep him on the roster all year, but with the potential to be moving on from Jamal Cohen after this season. Got a team option on him for $18 million next year. Having a plug-and-play left-handed hitting first baseman who um, is a lot younger than him on the roster and may have at this point in his career more upside doesn't sound like the worst thing in the world. So um, do we trade away a veteran? Do we go to only 12 pitchers? 
those are the kind of debates I'm going to be figuring out here in uh, between now and the start of the next episode, how to get these 27 players down to 26. If you have thoughts, would love to hear them in the comments. Um, although it is conceivable that I will have already um, done the next episode before I uh, see those comments. That happens in some cases. But I uh, am optimistic about the team. We'll also check in at the start of the next episode as to what our projections are for next season. 96-win uh, team last year. think that we should be certainly in that neighborhood this year and hopefully even better than that. Would love to um, have a team that wins the NL West and also earns a first-round bye. Um, but we'll know more about exactly what our expectations should be when we run the projections, when we do get the roster down to 26 people and we do get to opening day until then thank you so much for watching and hope you have a great day